Morning, this is Mr. William, West Virginia. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's the 20th, uh, not 27th. I'm, I'm thinking of the scripture. Today is the 17th day of January, 2019. I woke up this morning, and I always, when I wake up in, in mornings where God whispers a scripture or whispers a, a word to me, I'm always amazed because I'm telling you what, I spend most of my time disqualifying myself from, from being a man of God, disqualifying myself from hearing from God because of what's going on in my head, in my heart at times. Um, it's been a very hard season for me on top of not being able to hear out of one ear due to just something that's just weird right now. It's not anything that's hurting me or anything, just flat out can't hear. Um, we've kind of attributed it to me flying back from Florida back in November, so hopefully it will pop open eventually and I'll be able to hear again. But I woke up this morning and, and the Lord was speaking to me and he whispered a scripture and he says, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And I, I, you know what? I went to my scripture, to my concordance. I'm looking for this scripture. Can't find it. Actually, a buddy of mine called me this morning. We got to talk, and he says, it's not worded that way in the scripture. So I had to figure out by looking in my concordance and going through different scriptures what it was worded like. And in Isaiah 10, 27, this is how it's worded. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And I just, I don't want to make this long because I think it's it speaks for itself. The anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing is 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 defined different ways in Old Testament, New Testament. In the Old Testament, is it's 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 defined as the unction, um, grease or olive oil or richness, um, and it's also uh, defined as uh, to rub oil. On. It comes from the connotation from rubbing oil on. Now, in the New Testament, it means to rub oil on that has perfume, uh, and also to the smearing on of or the endowment of the Holy Spirit. Some good stuff here. So, the anointing of God, the smearing on of His of His Spirit, endows us to break off the yoke. And and I'm from New York, but I've been in the country. I've been in West Virginia for for most of my life now. So I've been in on farms. I've been around guys that are cowboys. I've been around country people who have uh, cattle and livestock, and I've seen what a yoke is. I actually owned a yoke for a while. I had it. I don't know what happened to it, but it disappeared because I used it for teaching. But basically, it can be almost an apparatus that fits over a horse's shoulders that has places where you can hook a rein so that you can steer it and control it. It also can be a wooden yoke, and it can be doubled or tripled. To where you can put it around uh, one, two, three yoke of oxen, uh, oxen, so they so you can control them while they're plowing. Of course, we don't do that anymore because we have machinery now. So yoke is would be an antique at this point in time, but it's still the picture of a yoke is something that's placed over the neck of something and attached in such a way to where it can be controlled by another individual or by something else. Many of us have these yokes, and sometimes I get up in the morning and I put a yoke of of unforgiveness or a yoke of <clears throat> of just being stubborn, a yoke of just want to go my way. And I'm controlled by that yoke all day long sometimes until the anointing of God hits me and I and the Holy Spirit breaks that thing off and I begin to walk free. God wants us to be free. He doesn't want us to be yoked up to anything. It also talks about not being unequally yoked with non-believers. There is a scripture, there's all kinds of scriptures about yokes that if you look through the, through the Bible, God doesn't want you to be yoked up in such a way that where you're controlled by things other than him and his Holy Spirit. And, and it's not a bad control. His control is an influence. It's not a, you got to do it this way or you die. He doesn't do that because of Jesus. He gives us free will to do basically what we want. But we have that unction. We have that Holy Spirit whispering to us to help us. We still have the right to do whatever we want to because God loves us enough to know that he needs people that are going to follow him and do what he wants out of their own free will. But he doesn't want us to be controlled by all those other things. See, we'd rather be controlled by all these other things than to really be controlled by a God. Uh, and he won't control us. So he's trying to keep us from being controlled by all this other stuff so we can hear him more clearly. All right? All right, that's all I got for you this morning. I hope it blesses you. Um, I hope you have a good day. I'm going to try and come up with some more word today. I'm working on some stuff uh, for the future. Um, 
and just trying to relax a little bit. Um, when you get to be my age, it's just nice to wake up and not have anything hurting, which is what I have today. Nothing hurting. Just can't hear out of this ear. Heal me, oh Lord. Heal me. All right? Hey, I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. I hope you have a great day. Shalom.